BBC football idols Alan Shearer and Jermaine Jenas promote gambling to millions of young World Cup fans. Football pundits from the BBC and ITV are using social media to promote gambling to millions of young fans during the World Cup. Former England internationals, including Alan Shearer and Jermaine Jenas, have been given lucrative contracts to act as ambassadors for various betting companies. Taking advantage of their exposure to millions of viewers, they share tips and push promotions to their legions of Twitter followers during the tournament in Russia. The afternoon before the opening ceremony, BBC pundit Shearer had already retweeted two tweets by bookmakers Coral to his nearly 650,000 followers. After signing a year-long deal as an ambassador for the gambling firm, the company's PR director described Shearer as quite simply the biggest football signing in Coral's history. Meanwhile, fellow BBC pundit Jenna's also joined in 24 hours before the tournament began, tweeting a video on behalf of Unibet. BBC guidelines state that care must be taken when promoting alcohol, high-interest financial products, or gambling. As part of an investigation into the extent to which the gambling industry has penetrated the World Cup, the Mail can also reveal, the number of TV gambling adverts has surged since 2007, when Tony Blair's Labour government eased restrictions on high street and online betting firms. Gambling firms are able to use a loophole that lets them advertise before the 9 p.m. watershed if it is during a live televised sporting event. Studies show youngsters are extremely susceptible to advertising, and more vulnerable to gambling addiction than adults. With about 25,000 problem gamblers aged between 11 and 16, the Gambling Commission warned last year that Britain was sleepwalking into a future public health storm. Sportswear giant Nike says it has withdrawn its supply of boots to Iranian footballers ahead of the World Cup because of new U.S. sanctions. The decision upset players who have been forced to buy their own pairs or borrow them. Iran manager Carlos Quiraz has asked FIFA for help. On the eve of Iran's match against Morocco yesterday, several first-team players had to buy Nike boots from sports shops in St. Petersburg. The company's move did not affect the team's performance, however, as a late goal secured a 1-0 victory. Nigeria fans will not be allowed to take their lucky live chickens into the stadium when their side play their opening game against Croatia today. Supporters of the Super Eagles say the tradition brings their team good luck, but it has nevertheless been banned by Russian officials. Andrei Ramak, the Minister of Culture in Kaliningrad, where Nigeria play tonight, said officials would advise fans where they would be able to carry their chickens instead. Labour MP Joe Stevens a member of the Commons Digital, Culture, Media and Sport Committee, said, All eyes are on the World Cup right now, and so far you can't seem to escape the gambling advertising. It's saturating every aspect of the game. We know there is a proven link between gambling advertising and rising problem gambling and addiction. That's why the government must look at tighter restrictions on gambling adverts particularly where children are being exposed to the lure of free bets online. Despite previous warnings, several pundits took to social media to tweet links to various betting sites. After all the disappointments, you might forgive fans for giving up on the England team. But this group of residents have shown their colors with pride, festooning their entire estate with more than 300 England flags as they prepare to cheer on their countrymen in the World Cup. Balconies on the Kirby Estate in Bermondsey, southeast London, have been turned into a sea of St. George's crosses, with a Colombian flag as the sole exception. The makeover was carried out over three evenings by football Matt Allen Putman, 48, Chris Dows, 39 and Geraldine Howard, 52. The trio pay for the flags out of their own pockets, but wrote to all 120 neighbors to confirm they agreed to them being displayed. The trio have never suffered a complaint or experienced any vandalism in the years since they started putting up the flags for the 2014 World Cup. The estate is also turned red and white on St. George's Day and for football's European Championships. Mr. Dows said, It gives you a warm feeling when you return home after work. It brings people out and it brings the kids together. It gets everyone talking. Miss Howard said the wonderful tradition had got bigger every year adding, 
This is the first year we've done the entire estate. The flags will stay up until England are knocked out of the World Cup. The team play their first game on Monday, against Tunisia. BBC pundit Robbie Savage, 43, helped to promote bookmakers William Hill to his 1.8 million Twitter followers. In the three days before the start of the World Cup, he retweeted daily promotional adverts that attempted to draw gamblers to the company's website. FIFA Fat Cats are making nearly £1 billion more from this World Cup than they did from the 2014 tournament in Brazil. According to FIFA financial documents reviewed by the New York Times, the 2018 Cup is set to generate £4.59 billion in revenue.